সর্বশেষ জরিপ অনুযায়ী আমেরিকায় সবচেয়ে বেশি বৃদ্ধিপদ ধর্ম হচ্ছে ইসলাম ইউরোপে সবচেয়ে বেশি বৃদ্ধিপদ ধর্ম হচ্ছে ইসলাম পৃথিবীতে সবচেয়ে বেশি বৃদ্ধিপদ ধর্ম হচ্ছে ইসলাম কোন তরবারি হাজার হাজার আমেরিকানদের ইসলাম গ্রহণ করতে বাধ্য করেছে হাজার হাজার ইউরোপিয়ানদের ইসলাম গ্রহণ করতে বাধ্য করেছে লক্ষ লক্ষ মানুষকে পৃথিবীতে ইসলাম গ্রহণ করতে বাধ্য করেছে কোন তরবারি এটা ইসলামের তরবারি এটা শান্তির তরবারি এই তরবারি সত্য এবং জ্ঞানের যাতে আছে মানব জাতির সকল সমস্যার সমাধান I'm Roger Nygaard from Los Angeles, California, United States. And if you wouldn't mind just starting, let's just start with, would you please tell me, are there things in the Quran, like in the Old Testament, for instance, that is portrayed in a positive light, which we no longer can accept today? Like slavery is, a, is an easy example in the Old Testament or the, or the, the Torah. And if so, how are we to reconcile that with today? See, this word slavery is one of the questions which is very difficult to answer in this age. As far as slavery is concerned, there is no verse in the Quran abolishing slavery. My brother does say that free slave encourages freeing of slave, etc. Many things in the Quran came as a prohibition stages. Because intoxicants were very much prevalent, alcoholism was very common. So first verse says that in Surah Bakhara chapter 2 verse 219, that in intoxicants, there is loss and profit. Loss is more than profit. It didn't say it's prohibited. Next verse after some time came in Surah Nisa chapter 4, 43, that do not pray with your mind be fogged. Don't pray when intoxicated. It didn't say it is prohibited. That means, okay, fine, we have to pray five times a day so we can't have alcohol in the morning, night time. It didn't say it was allowed, but it was silent. Finally, the ban came in Surah Maida chapter 5, verse 90, the last verse dealing with intoxicants. The intoxicants are prohibited. It came in stages. So many of the prohibitions came in stages because immediately to implement would have been difficult. But today, when we read, we have to take it as a whole. So slavery also was very much prevalent at that time. Scholars say that, fine, because it was difficult, maybe it was meant to be abolished later on. But if you look at a different angle, today if we analyze that the rules for slavery have been laid down very clearly in the Quran. It encourages freeing of slave, everything, but rules and regulations, even they have got their rights. And that's why at the time of the pagans, they said that, imagine, Prophet Muhammad is giving right to the slaves, Tomorrow, he'll even give rights to the animals. And that's what is there. In Islam, even animals have got the rights. There's a right for animals. How much to load an animal? You can load a donkey, but there are limits. If you do beyond that, it's prohibited. So, we believe that the slaves are also human beings. Now, if you compare with the UN Charter, if you compare to USA, what they had done, gotten more than they done, you know, all the prisoners were taken, and the way they were treated, I'm asking which is better. Is the Quranic better or what the U.S. is doing? Or the U.N. is doing? The U.N. Charter has got laid down for prisoners of war. What are the rules and regulations for prisoners of war? What the U.S. is doing, in contrary to the U.N. Charter also, and there's a big U.N. cry and then they have to apologize. So if you compare, even to a slave, you cannot do that. So when the Western world is objecting, why is there slavery in Islam? Why are you objecting to what's happening over there? It's called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. We are telling openly, don't encourage the freeing of slaves, don't keep, but if a situation arises today, that slave is a human being. You can't do what you read in the newspapers, there are photographs. The way they're treated like dogs, they're made to eat the feces. This you can't do. So when you're talking about human rights, are you following it? So if you consider the slave as a prisoner of war, suppose, 
hypothetically or even practically and in Quran also slaves are that way the slave means what if you have a war and something happens so what do you get so there are rules and regulations prisoners of war so the rules and regulations laid down in the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet are far humane than the UN Charter than what USA does only the world is different the prisoners of war POW here the policy is so what we are going to say that let's be practical in life the most of the scholars say that should did them as human beings and you should free slave we get so many blessings etc so here what we realize that as time passes the religion is the same Quran will be in the same our understanding of Quran may change and there may be little bit differences in the way of life I'll give you an example of smoking and logically it's right that today we have come to know so Quran is a telegraphic message telegraphic message don't have things which are harmful or which are poisonous so we didn't know previously that was poisonous and we had it but today we have come to know so your lifestyle has changed but that doesn't mean the religion has changed religion is the same understanding of that verse of Quran has changed but we have to realize in two ways the best person who understood the Quran was the messenger to whom it was revealed so to understand the Quran you have to understand the way the messenger understood point number one if we don't find in the lifestyle of the messenger you have to look in the lifestyle of his companions and this is also again based on the verse the Quran says Atullah was the Rasul obey Allah and obey the messenger so obey the messenger the messenger said that if you want to look at something or understand something look in the Quran if you can't find the Quran look in my lifestyle if you don't find my lifestyle look in my generation the companions if not in that the next generation then next three the nations so all this is based on the Quran says look at the messenger the messenger says if you want to see something the highest is the Quran then the hadith then the companions the next generation, the next generation so we have to understand how they understood so what they have understood that cannot change how the prophet has interpreted the Quran and if it has two meanings for example I'll give you a simple understanding for example it says even in the Bible that when Archangel Gabriel came to Mother Mary and said that you'll have a son so she says that how shall I have a son when I know it no man know it no man means knowing sexually not knowing I mean she knew her father right she knew many men but should we follow literally should you follow allegorically it's a combination sometimes literal is only right sometimes literal and symbolic both are right sometimes only symbolic sometimes allegorical depend so here literally if you take knowing Bible has made a mistake Quran says the same thing in Surah Imran chapter number 3 verse number 42 starts it goes on to 47 Archangel Gabriel comes and dress to Mother Mary and says that you shall have a son so Mother Mary replies how shall I have a son when no man has touched me now touched doesn't mean physical touch it means sexual touch so in Arabic the word used masa has got two meanings physical touch and sexual touch so here the verse only means sexual touch doesn't mean physical touch so here if a Quran can mean in two ways so then you have to go to the hadith if a Quranic verse has got two different meanings you go to the hadith and find out what did the messenger mean by that and many times both also right not here like the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed we have created the human being from something which clings a leech like substance a congealed lot of blood today all three are correct human beings are created from something which clings we know that the fetus clings to the uterine wall we know that the initial stages of embryo looks like a leech we also know that the initial stages in the first few days there's no blood circulation in the embryo it looks like a congealed lot of blood Previously, we thought only one was right. Today, science has advanced. We have come to know all three are right. So, in understanding the Quran, if the messenger specified this is right, then only that is right. And if I said that is wrong, so understanding the Quran, certain things, for example, the Quran says, don't have poisonous things. But that time, smoking wasn't there. So, in things which was not there at the time of the Prophet, and if general guidelines have been given, don't have things which are intoxicant. I doubt there was brown sugar at the time of the Prophet. Wine was there, fine. Brown sugar wasn't there. But today, by logic, even brown sugar is intoxicant. Brown sugar drugs is haram. So this is the development. But the guidelines are the same. It will never change. The way the Prophet has understood the Quran is final. Con context is important. Context. Context also. And the way the companions have understood the Quran or understood the messenger. So if you have an evidence Understanding the Quran the way the Prophet understood today you want to understand the different way it will not be accepted Or you have evidence that the companions of the Prophet Understood this verse in a certain way first is Quran 
Then comes the messenger, then comes the companions of the messenger. So if the companions of the messengers have understood the Quran this way, you cannot get any other meaning. You can get another meaning which is not contradicting. Like the companion of the Prophet understood that Allah means Kanjil God Abda. Today we know it's leech-like substance. So if you have a second meaning, but it's not contradicting the messenger and his companion, then you can follow it. But if it's contradicting, you cannot. So it is a science of understanding the Quran, which as human beings keep on advancing, you will get more knowledge. With the more knowledge, your minute changes of life, the lifestyle, little bit may change, but the basic message, because Almighty God has said that this is the last revelation, after this, no other revelation will come. So we believe that now, because no revelation will come, there's no messenger required. This is the last and final message. And this has the solution to the problems of humanity. So what we say, that Quran is a solution for the problems of humanity. And our Peace TV, coming back to it, where we started, that the tagline of the Peace TV is the solution for humanity. It's a good tagline. And though we have speakers from many speakers from states, from Canada, from UK, from Singapore, from Malaysia, from India, from Saudi, from UAE, different parts of the world. We have black speakers, white speakers, yellow, brown. So it's international. It's a mixture. A lot of people decide how they want to worship or interpret. Can a person take what they like about their religion or their scripture and follow those parts and ignore the parts they disagree with? Or do they have to accept all of it? Well, I would say that if you believe in God, God cannot make mistakes. So if you believe that this scripture is the word of God, then you start realizing that this part of the scripture is right and this part is right, that is wrong, so I'll follow what is right. That means the scripture per se is not the word of God. You either follow everything or you don't follow. Or you believe it's a religion which is not 100% perfect. So if you say this scripture is the word of God, you can't say I will follow this point. You can't say this portion is scientific, the other is not scientific. One portion is logical, the other is illogical. If it is from God, it cannot go against established science. It cannot be logical, it should be factual. So if everybody is deciding their own way to worship, then everyone is be chaos. something different. Right. That will be chaos. That's what has happened, that people have started manipulating the scriptures. That's how we find different religions. Almighty God, as you asked me in the morning, has prescribed only one way of life. Later on, because of people, for whatever reasons they have, they kept on changing the scriptures, it got changed and you have different religions. The messengers came and taught only one religion, that is submitting your will to God. Islamic Sharia Royce Shunir Bisto Shumohan Loko Odisha Onitimara. ইসলামী শরিয়া অনুসরণের মধ্যে নিহিত রয়েছে মানুষের ইহপরকালীন শান্তি ও কল্যাণ আপনি কি ইসলামী শরিয়ার সেইসব মহান লক্ষ্য নীতিমালা ও কল্যাণকর দিকগুলো জানতে চান তাহলে দেখুন ইসলামী শরিয়ার লক্ষ্য উদ্দেশ্য ও নীতিমালা সংক্রান্ত আমার আলোচনা समाधान दिल इसलमी सारिया नीतिमला कल रत साढ़े नुन सम्प्रचार सकाल आठटाएंगे पीस टी बांगल् অতি উত্তম অর্থনীতি অর্থনীতি সর্বোৎকৃষ্ট বাণিজ্য নীতি বাণিজ্য নীতি সঠিক লেনদেন বৈধ উপায়ে বড় লাভ ইসলামী অর্থনীতি কত সুন্দরভাবে নতুন যুগেতে সফলতা অর্জন করেছে জানার জন্য দেখুন ইসলামী অর্থনীতি পরবর্তী অনুষ্ঠান পিস টিভি বাংলায় Is it a conflict for people to believe in other supernatural things like UFOs or psychics or astrology? Believing in UFO, it doesn't go against the Quran. I would not call it supernatural. I would say something which is different or supernatural is not the right word I would use. But you can unidentified flying object. 
in the Quran, Surah Shura, chapter 42, verse 29. It says that Almighty God has created the heavens and the earth, and He has put creatures between them. We have to believe. Where life is there? You may say Ma, he may say, I don't know. But life is there? Yes, it is there. You want to call it UFO? And then by flying object, you want to call it ET, extraterrestrial, that's your prerogative. Quran says that life is there, I believe in it. Science will advance and then they're sending rockets and spaceships, where Mars has got life, all that is different. But Quran says that life, we have to believe in it. And so what about psychics or astrology? Yes, as far as astrology is concerned, there's a difference of opinion. One is astronomy, one is astrology. As far as astronomy is concerned, the signs of the heavenly bodies, stars, planet, there are various astronomical facts mentioned in the Quran. Astrology is something talking about the future, or how life will lead, how you're born, if you're born on this particular time, and this zodiacal sign doesn't cross that, and Rehu, and Ketu, and Libra, and all that. Islam prohibits believing in that. The verse of the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 90, which says, Ya Lizin Amunu, O you believe, in Namal Khamru or Mysuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, while well, an Azabu al dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich suminamili shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. First, then you will come to Flihun. Abstain from the handiwork that may prosper. So Quran says, besides intoxicants, gambling, fortune telling, and talking about the future, and idol worship, all these are prohibited. Quran doesn't say that no one can predict the future. Quran says you should not involve yourself in predicting the future. Interesting. There's a difference in that. Yeah. Could you define another word for me? The word is morality. Morality. Can I define it means? What does morality mean? Morality means actually following the moral values. Now what is morality for me in India may not be for Western America. So morality basically means following moral values. But the moral values may change. For example, simple example. That I normally speak about modesty in Islam that a woman should be completely covered, except face and hands up to the rest, I say. But I keep on deferring that in different societies, the modesty level keeps on changing. For example, in the strict Arab world, staring at a woman is immodest. That's what the Quran says. Staring at a woman is immodest. In India, no problem looking as long as you don't touch her. As long as you don't touch a woman, as long as a man does not touch a woman, a foreign man, Arab, it is modest. Western countries shaking hands is common. A woman and a man are a male and a female. In India, shaking hands, it's outside the culture. In some Western culture, when you meet, you even kiss. The man kisses a woman, it's normal. In some Western countries, it is immodest. In some Western countries, you do what you want with the woman and the male. As long as it is consent, it is modest. So it keeps on changing. When I went to Northern States last time, I was giving a talk on modesty. So one of the Americans told me, Indian women, they are so immodest. What do I mean? Eastern women are supposed to be more modest. How come? So I was shocked. What do you mean that the Indian women are immodest? So he told me, you Indian women, you show your stomach, belly. You know, so for an American, a woman showing the belly is immodest. In Indian culture, wearing a sari, showing the belly is fine, but it should be covered. Wearing shorts is immodest. So for a person of Indian culture, wearing shorts and the low neck is immodest. But for a Westerner, you wear shorts, no problem, you should not show your belly, you know? So it keeps on changing. So morality means following moral values. For me, I follow the moral values prescribed by our Creator Almighty God in the Quran and Hadith. So morality is culturally specific? Culturally or religious, or individually. So is there a moral yardstick, though, that applies to all cultures? Yes. The yardstick that has been laid down by our Creator is the best yardstick. What I'm saying is good for the human being, according to the doctor, may be right, may be wrong. Normally, whenever you make a machinery, the person who invented, produced it, he gives a catalog with it. He gives the instruction manual. If you follow the instruction manual, the machine will have a longer life, will be more useful. So our instruction manual is a glorious Quran. So the yastik, what I would say, is the yastik given by our creator what is moral. Otherwise, by human beings, India may have different moral values, USA may have different moral values, Europe may have different moral values, cultures may change. In India, there may be different moral values depending on background. So the common yardstick is the yardstick given by our Creator Almighty God. So what I do, I prove from the Bible. Like when I say in Islam, there are basically six criteria for modesty. Women should be completely covered, only part can be seen in the face and hand of the protest. She should not be clothed which are thin, which are transparent. 
which you can see through. It should not be tight fitting, so it reveals the figure. It should not be too glamorous. It should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And it should not resemble that of unbelievers. All these, most of the values I have been mentioned in the Bible, but a normal Christian does not know. Then I quote in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5. It says that thou shall not wear clothes that would pertinent to a woman, and a woman shall not wear clothes that would pertinent to a man. So one of the criteria has come. Further, 1 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 9 says that you should be dressed up modestly with sobriety, should not have braided hair of gold and pearl. Modestly. So if you see the photograph of Mother Mary, it is the same way as a Muslim, as a Muslim woman should be dressed up. Completely covered? If you see none. So when a Muslim woman wears a hijab, she is called as subjugated. If a nun wears, she is called religious. Why? What is the difference? The nun is completely covered. See Mother Mary. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 5. It says that if a woman who does not cover a head, she dishonors the head if she prays. A head should be shaved off. Bible is more strict even than the Quran, actually. Theoretically, if you check, Bible is more strict than the Quran. But people don't follow it. Don't follow it. So then I go to the Hindu scriptures. Your scriptures say that the woman's head should be covered, you should lower your gaze. They are shocked. So I rather come on commonalities. One is logic. And logically, why to prove hijab should be done is a different answer. So in this way, I'm trying to get all the people together. That finally, if you go to logic, the answer comes to one. But could a person still be a good person and do the right thing or be altruistic without knowing God or, or without having God or Allah as a part of their life? Yes, but not completely. To a great extent. In terms of numbers, to a great extent. In terms of quality, it may not be. For example, even a person who's atheist, he will say that honesty is the right policy. He may be just. It's not required that he should believe in God. This is inborn, innate nature. But the ultimate is if you don't thank God, if you don't worship him, the test is failed. This test in this world. So can he be a good human being? What do you mean by a good human being? If you're talking about honesty, fine, a person may not believe in God, may yet be honest. He may be just, he may be kind, he may be loving. So these are parts which are required what Almighty God tells the human beings to do which a Muslim should do. But unless the major thing, thanking God, is not there, you will not pass the test. And why do we thank God? Not for his benefit, for our benefit. The moment we thank God, we try and follow his advice. So this life is the test for the hereafter. So in terms of it, that can he achieve? Yes, he can achieve. He can achieve many things even without knowing God. He can be honest, he can be kind, he can be loving. Some things he may not agree. His logic may say that, for example, may say that, why should I dress up modestly? Some religions say that, fine, you can only have a sexual relationship with the person you are married. A person may be a very kind person, but you say, no, what does this go to do? I'm not hurting anyone. I'm having sex with an unknown girl, what's wrong? There may be things which he may make mistakes, he may falter, which he may realize later on, he may not realize. So what we kind of trial and error always. Like, for example, I go to a jungle, I start picking up fruits. I don't know which is poisonous, and I may poison myself. So the same way with medicines. You go to a doctor who's a specialist. So our creator has laid down the rules for morality. What is right, what is wrong? A logical person will agree with it. But some things you may not agree with because you may not know all the details. Like today, in the Western world, many people are religious who may not have sexual relationship with a person who is not a spouse, who's not married to. But yet there are many who have multiple life partners. I want to come back to that concept. But before we get there, a similar question, is it possible to be happy, mm -hmm. truly happy, without a relationship with God? Possible to be happy, but not truly happy. Happy, fine. Happiness, again, is a state of mind. True happiness, ultimate happiness, only by knowing God. Superficial happiness without God also is possible. For example, many times we feel, oh, that person is rich, he may be so happy. You know, I am earning only a thousand dollars, he is earning a million dollars. When you become a millionaire, you want to earn maybe a billion dollars. When you become the richest man, Bill Gates says that I'm not happy to be the richest man. So it is subjective. There are times people are happy with things, then they don't like it, and you're happy with other things. So main happiness is the state of mind. If you can't be happy when you're poor, you can't be happy when you're rich. That's right. Poverty and wealth have nothing to do with happiness. It is the way you look at it. 
a person can be happy even earning five hundred dollars and will be happy with it in the way he lives. So the thing is, it is subjective. So the true happiness can only come by knowing Almighty God. Right. Because for me, happiness is to please Almighty God. Islam doesn't prohibit material things, but materialism takes you away from God many a time. So therefore, Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that the rich will never enter heaven. Our Prophet said it is difficult for a rich man to enter heaven. Having wealth is not prohibited, but it's a danger for you. You may go away from Almighty God. So the chances for a poor man to go to heaven is more. But normally, logically, a rich man is happy, poor man is sad. When you go to villages, sometimes, you know, I travel with my wife, travel with the family, and many of the Westerners, when they go to the countryside, they envy the country people. Oh, these people see no problem. No anxiety, yet they're happy. They want water, they go to the well, they pull out. Happy go lucky. There is no tension of the world or the life of the city. Like when you see a kid, the kid is so happy, not bothered. No examination. So when we say the little kid grow, it will be better. But the life of the kid is the best. So people in the villages, they have no tension. How much they may be earning? Maybe 500 rupees in terms of dollars. There may be 10 dollars. Very happy. Then we think or wish that we could have had that life. When we are really spiritually and when we are really tired of all the material things, then we crave for that. Therefore, we go to countryside and we go for a holiday. So that life is different. So it is mainly subjective. But true happiness can only come by knowing God. What is sin and what is the punishment for sin? Sin, as I would define, is disobeying our Creator. In short, I can give various sins, but in short, if you disobey the commandment of Almighty God, who is our Creator, you are doing a sin. Thank you. You've been fantastic. Thank it's you. been a pleasure to meet you, and, and I look you. forward to seeing you again. Hopefully, inshallah. Exactly. संपद के सुरक्षित न रखते पारे, विनियोग अपनर संपद के नाबिद दिखोते पारे, किंतु जाकात दिले निश्चय अपनर संपद बाढ़ बे थक बे सुरक्षित एवं कुवित्रो। बीस जी भीर शाते था कून अपनर जाकात दानी रोत्तो पढ़ते पारे न आईआरएफआई आल्ट्राइन बैंक क्वाड्रेंट कोट आठ चौलिश कैल्थोर पिरोड बर्मिंगहम यूके पाउंड अकाउंट नंबर शून्य एक एक तीन दो ही तीन शून्य एक आई बैंड जी बी बांडो एल ओ वाई डी तीन शून्य नौ छः तीन चार शून्य एक शून्य दो ही चार एक नौ दो ही शॉट कोड तीन शून्य 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 आठ तीन स्वेप बी आई सी कोड आई बी ओ बी जी बी बाईश टाका पाची आमदर ईमेल करूँ एडमिन एट द प्रोग्रामे सरल पथे चोक रखलम्रीटी जानुन, महान अल्लाह पवित्र कुरान उल्लेख कर सरल पथ कल रत साढ़े आठटाय पुनः सम्प्रचार सकाल सतटाय बांगलेश